So a while ago, actually like two weeks, I think, I did a video on The Flash. And it was an okay show, if not, you know, a little weird at times, but eh, it's fine, you know, whatever. Well, turns out, unbeknownst to me at the time, The Flash is actually a spin-off series of a show called Arrow. And they're all part of something called the Arrowverse, because someone's very clever. So this week, I decided to go right to the source and check out the CW superhero drama that started all of this, for better or worse. But before that, I gotta let you know that this video is sponsored by Swagbucks. Now, I know what you're thinking. Swagbucks? Wait, is it some high school sophomore running for class president? Yeah, I get it. But Swagbucks is a service that lets you take part in market research from your phone, from your computer, whatever. It's real simple. You just take surveys, you watch videos, you just kind of surf the web like you normally would, and you earn points that you can exchange for Amazon gift cards, Walmart gift cards, get paid straight to PayPal, whatever you want. You can do it on your way to school, on the treadmill, while you're taking a dump, I mean, whatever. I checked it out, guys. It's really simple, really easy to get the hang of. And listen, if you sign up right now with my link below in the description, you get five bucks for free, just for signing up. I mean, come on, right? So, you know, if you're a student or you're just looking for a simple way to earn some extra cash on the side, check out Swagbucks, link below, give it a shot. Okay, back to the show. The show starts out with Mr. Arrow monologuing about his time on a secret remote island. The name of the island they found me on is Leon Yu. It's Mandarin, for purgatory. I've been stranded here for five years. I've dreamt of my rescue every cold black night since then. For five years, I've had only one thought, one goal. To figure out why Jessica dumped me sophomore year right before homecoming. I mean, like, come on, seriously, she didn't even do it face to face. She just had her friend hand me a folded up note. Like, who even does that? So this gruff manly voice belongs to Oliver Queen, a billionaire playboy, and that's pretty much all you need to know about him. Oliver Queen is alive. The Starling City resident was found by fishermen in the North China Sea five days ago. Five years after he was missing and presumed dead following the accident at sea, which claimed the Queen's Gambit. You know, this is one of those, like, superhero trope things that, for me at least, kind of takes the fun out of everything. With superheroes, right, you have, like, the every man, every woman type of, like, fantasy fulfillment or whatever, you know? Just your average person living life, maybe things aren't going so well, hey, they got bills to pay, BAM! Superpowers. But then you got your Batmans, your Iron Mans, your Arrow Mans, having them be billionaires, like, right from the get-go, it's just like, what can I possibly relate to here? And I know a lot of people like Batman, or Iron Man or whatever, and that's fine, that's great, follow your dreams, have a good time. I'm just saying, I personally can't really relate to anything that happens with these characters because they're so far removed from anything I could ever understand. Ugh, I'm so bored of counting all my money and dating so many beautiful women. Guess I better go fight some crime with my cool abs. Pachoo, pachoo, take that crime. Pachoo, pachoo. I mean, maybe I'm like the only person who feels this way, but like, whatever. So one day, Oliver gets found on this island by a Chinese fishing boat and brought back home after five years. 20% of his body's covered in scar tissue. Second degree burns on his back and arms. X-rays show at least 12 fractures that never properly healed. Has he said anything about what happened? No, he's barely said anything. Moira, I'd like you to prepare yourself. The Oliver you lost might not be the one they found. This Oliver has five nipples. It's really weird. Back in his old life, with his dad dead and five years passing, things are a little different than he remembers. But, as should be pretty obvious by now, Oliver himself has changed a lot as well. Oh, I am so sorry, Mr. Oliver. I need you about this for cooling time. Dude, you speak Russian? I didn't realize you took Russian at college, Oliver. I didn't realize you wanted to sleep with my mother, Walter. <laughs> and everyone's having a little trouble adjusting to this new reality. Later, Oliver meets up with Laurel Lance, the sister of Sarah Lance, who is secretly on the boat with Oliver five years ago when it sunk and allegedly she died. Oh, and Oliver was actually dating Laurel at the time. There's that little wrinkle. Just keep that in the back of your head. It was my fault. I wanted to ask you not to blame her. She was my sister. I couldn't grieve because I was so angry. That's what happens when your sister dies while screwing your boyfriend. We buried an empty coffin. I know that it's too late to say this, but I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry too. I'd hope that you'd rot in hell a whole lot longer than five years. <sighs> I think she might be upset. At some point later in time, Oliver and his friend Tommy are kidnapped, because, you know, like, why not? And of course, Oliver's like, all invincible, or like, whatever. But there's one part of this fight scene that's just really bizarre. Like, watch this. Like, everything 
everything else in this show is like heavily stylized, choreographed, quick cut action, but then he like jumps over this thing and just like runs out of batteries halfway through. Running down the hall, rush over to the stairs, camera wipe, gotta jump over the wire. Anyway, so after this kidnapping, Oliver just decides to build a secret base in like half an hour, cause like, why wouldn't you? Okay, now where did he get all this stuff? <laughs> oh yeah, he's a billionaire. See, this is like what I'm talking about. Like he can just do anything or get anything whenever it's convenient. So Oliver hears about a man named Adam Hunt, who I'm pretty sure probably has a brother named Mike, but that's a different story for a different time, and how he's been stealing and swindling money away from the poor and disadvantaged. So Oliver decides to set up a plan to steal money from Adam and give it back to his victims, instead of, you know, just doing it himself because he's a billionaire and 40 million dollars is nothing to him but like what you think I'm gonna spend my own money on these people? So that night there's a congrats on not being dead party for Oliver and he's using that to mask his little Robin Hood charade thing but his little sister shows up and starts getting involved with some unsavory individuals. Who let you in here? I, I believe there was somebody who said right this way Miss Queen. Well you shouldn't be here. <laughs> I'm not 12 anymore. No you're 17. I know that it couldn't have been easy for you when I was away. Away? <laughs> No, you died. So I'm sorry if I turned out some major disappointment, but this, me, is the best I could do with what I had to work with. Let's bounce. Okay, I was with you till the whole let's bounce thing. Like, I was on your side, I was fighting for you, and then you just had to go and ruin it. I'm not 12 anymore. I'm all grown up, and this is who I am. Let's bounce. This was a great idea. He puts his plan in motion and breaks into Adam Hunt's office and, you know, does his little green arrow thing of like being invincible and all that. Now, okay, maybe I missed something somewhere, but like, so he has infinite money and all that, but like, when did he put in the infinite ammo, all weapons cheat codes? Like I can suspend my disbelief with the cool bow and the arrows, but like a mechanical grappling arrow, like wait, 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 when did this even happen? Like wait, you just order these on Amazon? Where's this coming from? When did you ever have the time to do this up to now? Anyway, in the end, he hacks into what I'm assuming is a secured internal network and steals $40 million. <clears throat> with a magical computer hacking arrow. Yeah, oh how I wish I was making this up. And finally, we learned that it was actually his mom that hired the guys who kidnapped him and Tommy in the beginning of the episode. Police failed to identify the men I hired to kidnap Oliver. They never will. Should we arrange another abduction? No. There are other ways of finding out what my son knows. You know, with any superhero TV show or movie, there has to be some level of suspension of disbelief. Obviously, right? You have to accept that people have superpowers and all that stuff. That's fine. But like, that doesn't mean you can just do anything. There has to be some kind of like internal logic to these shows or else it all just kind of falls apart under its own absurdity. And when you have like infinite arrows, grappling arrows, arrows that can hack computer networks, I mean, wow. This is a show. Yeah. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. Now, I know I need to clarify a couple things just because I know some people are gonna take this the wrong way because that's how the internet works. You know, I'm not saying that I like actively dislike Batman or Iron Man, whatever. And I know a lot of people like those and sure, you know, in a movie it's fun to watch and whatever, but like with Batman, for example, the most interesting aspect of Batman is really the villains, right? You got like Mr. Freeze and then they got Joker and Two-Face. They're always like very interesting, like sort of humanistic stories that make them very relatable, whereas Batman himself is just like this rich dude who's like dark voice and all that stuff. And with Arrow, it's kind of the same thing where I was watching it and it was just like, okay, so it's a rich dude who's super strong and super powerful and has lots of toys and he fights crime, the end. And it, you know, it just for me, it was like, I couldn't really get that invested in the main character because I personally just didn't really have like a connection, like nothing about his life or situation speaks to me whatsoever. When you have something like The Flash, for example, right, just your average everyday dude who just gets struck by lightning and now has to figure it like that, it's at least more relatable to me. As weird as both these shows were, I guess I, I enjoyed The Flash a little bit more. I could really relate to what was going on in some way. Not that I've, you know, been struck by lightning, but you know what I'm saying. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Send me a tweet. Send me a message. I love to get them. I try to respond to everything I get. Don't forget to follow my dog, Charlie, on Instagram. It's Charlie Meets Pumpkin. My wife posts there every single day. Check out some merch if you're interested on Teespring. I got a little Patreon going on. Five bucks a month. You get behind the scenes stuff. You get to see thumbnails early. You get some early drafts of scripts from the videos. You can kind of see how the video changed over time. But it's just, you know, if you're interested, you can help support the channel. Help me keep doing what I'm doing. If you like it, throw me a couple bucks. If not, you know, it's totally fine. No pressure. Anyway, above all else, have a great day, everybody. And I'll see you all next time.